It's clear when you meet Sean Ryan that he has all three. His enthusiasm for the Yukon and Yukon Gold is contagious. His horse sense allows him to combine traditional bush skills with the latest technology. His persistence is evident in his story. So we said if it takes 10 years, it'll take 10 years. And we ended up just starting mapping out ridge by ridge by ridge, a systematic sampling program to map out and try to identify, hopefully, an ore body. It all started when Sean and his wife, Kathy, moved into a tin shack that had served as a barber shop at the turn of the last century. They stayed for eight years. Well, there was no running water or electricity, so it was just a standard 300 square foot old cabin. <laughs> But it was kind of nice. It was uh, like we started, we raised our, started our family there, the two kids. And uh, it was pre this GIS and GPS era. Like, so it was pretty well all paper stuff. And so it was color pencils. So back then it was mylar on your windows and the old cabin drawing and trying to, that was your light table and stuff like this. You had your stencils and you had your white out and you'd write your numbers if you were doing like a, a lead zinc project, you'd plot out lead, and it would take you three hours to do 300 samples. In the mid to late 90s, when everyone else was leaving the bush, Sean was just getting started. He had a theory that the placer gold that triggered the famous 1898 Klondike Gold Rush must have come from a local source in the Yukon. You had to believe that this beast exists out there. You know, everybody hears about it, but nobody's ever seen the beast. We see tracks. Well, I looked at the placer gold as Sasquatch tracks. We've got evidence. There's this beast is around here. This mother load or whatever type of deposit produced it has to be around. But everybody's saying it's eroded and it's not, there's it no longer exists. Sean's persistence paid off. And literally, I walked up that valley, up to the top, it was a big dead end. And there on surface, right at the top end, was a boulder the size of basically this table that was running an ounce and a half of gold. And I said, and we found a nice little high-grade ore body there. So the point was, is I'm going like, well, I'm not Einstein, but basically it's, uh, it might be that simple still up here in the Yukon. Although Sean is the son of a Timmins miner, he has no formal training as a prospector. It's his ingenuity, keen intuition, and methodical soil sampling that led him to gold. His success is based on his readiness to embrace new technology and a unique ability to see patterns in his research. Sean also bucked tradition by going deeper and adapting daffodil planters from Holland to take soil samples. Combining that with the latest GPS and GIS technology led to the discovery of the Golden Saddle Deposit, which became the White Gold Deposit. The whole exploration program is designed on a soil. And the whole thing was the White Gold Deposit was found with two soils. And two soils led us into over $2 billion worth of gold. Sean found another large deposit just 15 miles from the first. So then what happened was I optioned it out to Kamenak and uh, we did the work last year, uh, soil work, and then this past season they drilled it and on their first drill hole they started hitting gold. Sean says that a third discovery called the Attack on the Raw property created a staking rush. That staking rush has had a significant impact on the Yukon. Our biggest stake in Russian Yukon was about 28,000 claims in the Finlayson Lake over about a year and a half period. And uh, this year alone, we've got over 70,000 claims staked. We have the lowest unemployment rate in the country today. Uh, we are number four in the world. Uh, when you interview uh, mining executives, Yukon is number four in the world when it comes to mining investment attraction or a, or a place, attractive place to invest. Uh, we have hundreds of millions of dollars now being invested in the mining industry here in the Yukon. A lot of that 
goes to the, uh, a lot of the credit goes to the efforts of people like Sean Ryan. Sean is certain he couldn't have done it without the support of his wife Kathy, tremendous help from people at the Yukon Geological Survey, and the initial $10,000 government grants for prospectors that kept him going in the early years. In many cases, prospectors go through decades of hard work and effort and uh, never realize their dreams. In this case, Sean has realized his dreams. His efforts are paying off, but it also is paying off for the Yukon Territory. We're proud of him, uh, we thank him, and well done, young man.